Birria tacos are all over YouTube, and you know there's something special when all the big internet cooks are on to Birria tacos. Sam the Cooking Guy, Babish, Joshua Wiseman, and if you're not watching all those guys, you should be. They're all great. You can get some valuable information from them. But they've all done a version of the Birria taco, slow-cooked meat in a slightly sweet and gently spicy sauce, griddled tortillas, manchango cheese. Oh, it's just an amazing combination. So one of the things I found out is that every recipe was just a little bit different. So I want to try and honor the tradition of the birria taco, but I want to do it in my own style. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is make our spice rub that's going to go on our meat as well as in our sauce. We're going to start with brown sugar, Mexican oregano, and again the recipe for all this can be found in the description below. We'll link it to our website garlic powder and onion powder, cinnamon, coriander, cumin, and then about a tablespoon each of salt and pepper. And now we're going to mix this up so it's all nicely incorporated. And what we're going to do with this when we get it for the brown sugar broken up is we're going to use half of this mixture on our meat and the other half is going to simmer in our sauce. I've got a pound and a half each of chuck and short rib. So what we want to do is get a little bit of oil on each piece. And then we're going to hit this side with our spice mixture. So when we talked about slow cook meat, there's many different ways you can slow cook. You can pressure cook it, you can slow cook it, you could roast it in the oven for many hours. But today I'm going to do something a little bit different. We're going to sous vide our meat. The sous vide is cooking meat slowly in an immersion bath. So we're going to have to vacuum seal this and it's going to be great. One of the things I saw on, on one of the YouTube videos that I watched was somebody incorporated a marrow bone into the vacuum seal bag just to add another layer and depth of flavor to the sauce that gets cooked for 24 hours at 185 degrees. That looks about good. Now we're going to set this off to the side, let it sit and rest for a while. And next, we're going to destem and seed our peppers. We've got our guajillo peppers. They're dried. They need to be stemmed and seeded. Um, the recipe varies. It could be between four and six dried guajillo peppers. I've got kind of three big ones and three smaller ones here, so I'm going with six peppers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deseed and I'm just going to split it right down the middle and just kind of run my thumb through there and get all or as many of those seeds out as I can. Okay, we're on our last pepper. Let's get that top off of there and we'll get these final bit of seeds out. All right, and there you have it. Six guajillo peppers stemmed and seeded. Now the fun starts. We're ready to sear our meat. Get your pan smoking hot. I've got about two tablespoons each of olive oil and sunflower oil in here. You can see I've got my meat and my marrow bones. Yes, we're gonna sear those marrow bones as well. So let's get into the pan. So we've got one side of our meat seared here. It took about three minutes. So it's gonna be about three minutes for each of these other sides. So be patient. Again, the better color you have on these, the better your final products. Our meat is seared and it's ready to come out of the pan. I'm going to take it out, put it on the sheet pan, and then we're going to get right into making our sauce. I'm going to turn our heat down to medium, and I'm going to get our onions. I'm going to get our chipotle peppers and adobo sauce in the pan. And then I'm also going to get about two tablespoons and you can tell this is a scientific measurement of two tablespoons here. I'm actually just gonna kill the rest of this tube of tomato paste. Stir this up, and we wanna get all of this beautiful fond off the bottom of this pan. So all of this deliciousness to the bottom of the pan we want in our sauce. So let's go ahead and scrape all that up. What we're looking for here is our onions to start to turn translucent. And wow, the smell of that adobo sauce coming from the pan is really something amazing. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get our garlic in there. 
It's about six cloves of garlic. There's a lot of garlic in this recipe, but it's going to be delicious. And then we're gonna get our dried guajillo peppers in. Now in this step, what we're doing is we're beginning to soften the, the guajillo peppers. As a reminder, we're on medium heat right here. So you can see we've got just kind of a nice sizzle going. We're not really frying this. We're just kind of warming everything through. Here is the point where we wanna add our dry seasoning blend. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing this prior to adding our beef stock is I want the dry heat here to heat all the spices up and start to release their flavor. I wanna check and see how soft our guajillo peppers are getting, and you can see they're getting nice and soft. So I think we are ready to incorporate our liquids. Two cups of beef stock. I've got the juice of about a lime and a half or so. So one of the ingredients that I added to the recipes that I found online is about two tablespoons of honey. We're gonna stir this up. Now what we wanna do is bring all of this to a boil. As soon as it starts to boil, we're gonna turn it down to a simmer and we're gonna simmer approximately 20 minutes or until these guajillo peppers are really soft and pliable. You can see they're just, just slightly stiff right now and we want them really soft so they're gonna blend up well in the blender. And I just wanted to let you know, I almost forgot because I left this item over in my prep area and didn't bring it over here to the stove top, but it's our 15 ounces of tomato sauce. We almost didn't make it because I left it over there. This is the important mise en, place, mise en place and having everything in its place. And this wasn't in its place. While our sauce was simmering on the stove top, I divided our meat and one marrow bone and two bay leaves into each of our sous vide bags. We're gonna vacuum seal these once our sauce is blended, but let's set these aside for the moment. And here's our sauce that's been simmering, and I am gonna give this a quick taste. Again, I always advise tasting along the way as you go. Well, that's pretty good. That's gonna be really delicious when that slow cooked meat, when the fat breaks down and the bone marrow breaks down and incorporates into that sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and try and get this in the blender without making too much of a mess. This sauce is still very hot. So one of the things you wanna be careful of when you turn the blender on is it's gonna splatter. So I'm gonna kinda of keep a loose cover here and I'm gonna go on liquefy. We've blended for a minute or two. I'm gonna go ahead and check the consistency. We don't want any chunks in our sauce whatsoever. So we're gonna go ahead and blend this for another two minutes or so. Then we'll get it into our sous vide bags and get those sealed up. I blended our sauce for about an additional three minutes or so. It's perfectly smooth and delicious. Now what we wanna do is put enough sauce in each of our vacuum bags just to cover the meat. I've got my bags leaned up against this cutting board here for some support. And I'm gonna say right there is good. Now, if you're not familiar with sous vide, these bags need to be sealed up because they're gonna take a water immersion bath at 185 degrees for 24 hours. And so they need to be completely airtight and they need to be completely sealed. So we are going to get them under the sealer here. And I'm gonna try and do this without getting too much of the sauce sucked up into the sealer, which sometimes can be a mess. So we'll just close that down and we're gonna hit our seal and you can see the bag is shrinking up it's sucking all of the air out of the bag and the bag's not going to get too tight because there is a lot of sauce in that bag and I think that looks about good and now we're just going to go ahead and seal the bag we're using an Inovo brand sous vide and vacuum sealer and we'll put a link down below to our Amazon store so you can get these these are really great for meats that take a long time or, or benefit from really slow cooking. Um, ribs, brisket, pork shoulder, um, chuck and short rib in this case. The lid helps the evaporation process, but over the next 24 hours, you probably will have to add some water every four, five, six hours um, in addition to what you already have in the bath. But the lid definitely helps slow down the evaporation process. So you can see I've got some lovely clamps here. These are used for food only. 
and I'm going to go ahead and get this in our bath and clamp the sides down just so it doesn't move it around. So what happens is the water circulates constantly in the container, circles around the product to help cook it evenly, slowly and evenly. And drop the lid down. We only lost about three degrees or so of temperature, which is not bad at all. The Innova will bring the temperature right back up to 185 within a couple of minutes. So what we're going to do is these are going to slow cook over the next 24 hours, which yes, sounds like a long time, but trust me, the wait will be worth it. So what we want to do now is we want to separate the meat from the sauce. And the first thing we want to get out of there is our marrow bone. But you can see right there, we, the, bear, the marrow has completely melted and incorporated it itself into the sauce. And that's exactly what we want to see. So now we need to fish out our meat from the sauce. And there is part of the bay leaf that we'd put in there. We'll put that to the side because we're not going to need that. Okay, we got our meat separated. Let's get a pan in here. And now one of the things I want to do is get this sauce, hopefully without spilling it, into our saucepan. I've moved our sauce over to the stovetop. We're going to get to that in a minute, but now we need to shred our meat. And you can see how it's just completely falling apart. And this, to me, is the advantage of doing this in a sous vide. So now what I want to do is I want to take this, I want to put it to the side, let it cool down just a little bit more. Then we're going to head over to the stovetop and we're going to deal with our sauce. And what we want to do is we want to bring it to a simmer because we want to get the oils from the meat and the bone marrow are going to come up to the surface and we're going to skim that off of the top. But we're not going to discard that. Oh no, we have plans for that. It's okay if you get some sauce in here because what we want to do or what we're going to do is we're going to dip the tortillas in this sauce and oil mixture and then we're going to grill them on the Blackstone grill. And you can see as it's heating up, you can see the oils around the edges coming up to the top. And the sauce will tell you when it's done. It'll start to boil. And when you don't see any more oil coming up to the surface, you've gotten pretty much all you're going to get out of it. So what we're going to do with this sauce is first we're going to put a couple layers on our, a couple ladlefuls on our meat to kind of moisten our meat up and get more of this flavor kind of back into our meat. And then secondly, when you serve the tacos, you're going to have a nice little dipping dish to dip the tacos in the sauce. So we're going to reduce this down to a simmer and let it sit here while we set up the Blackstone Grill. This has been a very long process. Are you guys ready to eat some tacos? Because I know I am for sure. So we've got all of our ingredients. We've got our lovely fat sauce combination that we're going to dip the tortillas in. We've got our meat, which has a couple of extra ladles of the sauce to give it that extra flavor. And then on the inside of the taco, we're going to put some cilantro, some red onion, and some shaved manchego cheese. So let's get started. So I'm going to take each tortilla, and I'm going to dip it in this lovely mixture and get it on the grill. And you can see our, our Blackstone grill, which I love the Blackstone grill, is super hot. You've got a nice sizzle there. I'm gonna, we're on low right now. I'm going to turn this up to medium. And I'm going to let these sit for just a moment and get a little bit crispy on this bottom side. Then what we're going to do is we're going to flip these over, add our ingredients on, and let that other side cook. So we're just going to go ahead and turn these. You see we got a little bit of color on these, but not too much. We just wanted to get them warm through. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get our meat mixture on one half of the taco. Okay, we got our meat mixture on there. On the other half of these tacos, we're gonna get our manchango cheese. And now on our cheese side, I'm gonna get a little bit of cilantro. And I can tell you, if you're on the fence about the cilantro, don't skip it because it adds so much flavor to these tacos. And then a finely diced red onion. And now we're going to take our spatula and we're going to gently fold and press these down. 
fold it over and press it down. And let's get it kind of in the hot spot of the grill. And we're going to give these just a minute on this side. Okay, and we're ready for a quick flip. And look at the nice char on that tortilla. That is flavor right there. That is, that is going to be delicious flavor. So we're going to let these sit for about another minute. Then we're going to plate up and then Finally, it's time to eat some tacos. So one of the things I think that goes better with tacos than anything else is an ice cold beer. And you know our favorite beer happens to be Holla Daily Brewing out of Golden, Colorado, dedicated gluten-free brewery, making beers that we don't even, you wouldn't even no. know that they're gluten-free. And so what I did today was a Fat Randy's IPA to go along with these tacos. Cheers. Cheers. Fat Randy would love to eat these tacos. Fat Randy would absolutely love, love these tacos. Let's okay, get into these. I'm going for this one at the end here. Okay, I'm going in the sauce, going in the sour cream, and then going in my mouth. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Oh my God. So there. There are tacos, and then there's this. There's a reason <laughs> that every YouTube cooking channel on the internet has done the birria taco no. because there really truly is something special about it and it's it's not about the heat it's no, about the no, no. depth of flavor it's there's some there's a little bit of smoky underlying mm -hmm. heat but then there's all the flavors there and you can taste all the flavors individually you can taste the mexican oregano you can taste the lime you can taste everything in here well the cinnamon is what strikes it for me I love that hint of cinnamon. It's not very strong, but it is there. It's obvious, um, and it blends so well with all the other flavors. And the crunchiness, the crispiness of the tacos is just, and the meat, I mean, just really, literally, the best taco I've ever eaten. And what the oil that we skimmed off the top of the sauce did to that tortilla, mm. it just crisped it up and gave it this caramelized goodness on the outside mm -hmm. that just adds yet another dimension of flavor. So there you have it guys, the birria taco. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell to be alerted for other amazing recipes we have coming up. Um, go check out our website, gfexplorers.com. And we've got some exciting things coming up in we the do. next few weeks here. We so once again, thanks again. Thanks for hanging on with us. Cheers.